live from Seacrest Field, Lincoln, Nebraska. Sports Video Productions presents Nebraska School Activities Association 1988 State Championship Class A Football Championship. Omaha Creighton Prep, the Junior Jays, 9 and 2 on the year versus the Knights of Lincoln Southeast, also 9 and 2 for the season. Brought to you by Occidental Nebraska. By Baker's Supermarkets. By Team Sports. By College Football Video Services. Blue Cross and Blue Shield. By Snapper. And by Landon's. Hi, everybody. Joe Patrick with Dan Livingston. And down on the sidelines, another guy that I know you're going to recognize because he spent some good days with the Cornhuskers and is now an expert sideline reporter. Adrian Fiala will be down there, and we'll be looking for sideline reports all through the night. What a night. The weatherman loves us, I think. We'll be back now to introduce the starting lineups in tonight's game after this moment out. Nebraska School Activities Association State Championship game. And ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for the Southeast Knights of Lincoln. The defensive unit features number 45, Ron Samuel at left end. John Alberg, number 67, at the opposite end. The middle guard, number 66, Chad Davis. Defensive tackle, number 75, Mark McIntarper. Defensive end, number 85, Matt Nitsche. One of the linebacker spots, number 40, Neil Boker. And with him at the other linebacker, Kyle Emsick. Left cornerback for the Knights, number 17, Brad Blumenstock. Manning the right corner, number one, Jeff Stick. The Knights monster back, Brian Bach. And at free safety for Lincoln Southeast, Eric Altgilbers. The coach, John Mazursky of Lincoln Southeast, been here the first time tonight. Southeast has been here. Chuck Mazursky has been here. Uh, himself just this time as far as the finals are concerned. Southeast was here about 10 years ago. The Creighton Blue Jays, the Little Jays will start number 86, Scott Thornton at one split end spot. Number 25, John Crystal at the other. At left offensive tackle, number 50 is Ted Stinson. Left guard for the Little Jays, Pat Bomaka. At center for Creighton Prep, number 53, Shane Smith. Their offensive right guard, number 76, Dean Brown. Right offensive tackle, number 68, Sean Borges. At tight end, number 83, Dave Cripe. Starting quarterback for the Eastern Division champions, number 14, Jerry Durbin. At fullback for the Little Jays, John McCann. Starting at running back, number 20, Jason Williams. 
Finally, the Blue Jays flanker back, number 45, Matt Mullen. Coach of the Creighton Little Jays is Tom Jaworski going for his fourth straight. On the sideline, we said earlier, a guy who I'm sure you recognize from his playing days or from his broadcasting days, either way, he's our Troy Donahue lookalike, Adrian Fiala. Adrian? Well, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, thanks for the compliment. Uh, Troy Donahue, I guess that really dates me. Great night for football this evening right here. We've uh, we've experienced a lot of poor weather here lately, a lot of cold and blustery weather, but it's really a great night to play, Joe. Uh, these two teams are really keyed up. I'll tell you what, there's a great rivalry between these two teams. Uh, Creighton Prep has been here eight times, if you can believe that, in the finals. They've won five of those. Southeast, of course, has been here a couple times late in the 70s. They won those uh, those ball games. Their heart really, uh, I guess if, if we want to make a prediction, our heart is for Lincoln Southeast experiences for the Junior Jays. It's going to be a well of a football game. Adrian Fiala will be our sideline reporter, and as they go out to meet the captains, the referees, we'll be back in just one minute with Class A Championship football. Seacrest Field, and that is a beautiful field indeed, is Adrian Fiala. It's glass, grass, Dan, and it is just like a cushion. I walked across it, and it's almost bouncy. It really is a nice field. I was up here on Wednesday when we were preparing for this ball game, putting up the scalping and looking it over, and I couldn't believe the shape the field is in. You couldn't have better conditions to play this ball game, Joe. These ball teams are really not, uh, they're kind of no-name ball teams. They're not outstanding ball players on either side, but they've done what they had to get, get done. Both teams are almost eliminated about halfway through the season. Now, after the first two ball games, Lincoln Southeast did didn't have a win, but of course they had lost to Grand Island and to uh, Central. Creighton Prep almost got eliminated about four games into the season, so they both came back. A couple of no-name, scrappy-type ball teams. You would think it would be a tremendous defensive ball game, but oftentimes when that happens, Joe, the defense causes a lot of turnovers, which could make for a high-scoring ball game. So I can't wait to get it underway, Joe. Now the players you met aren't going to be around for a while. As almost always happens, the flip of the coin was won by Southeast, and they elected to receive the football, so their offensive unit will be on. You're looking at Brian Rue, number 90, who will be doing the kicking for Creighton. Here he comes. We're going to play Class A championship ball. Big high kick waiting for it. On the hop, back at the 3, to the 10. He's around the 15-yard line to the 20, and swarmed under Jim Collins, number 24, the first guy there for the Junior Jays. Brad McClatchy, number 14, both quarterbacks, number 14 in the starters tonight. Watch wide receiver Jeff Stick, tight end Sean Gillespie. We'll give those lineups to you in just a moment, but McClatchy is the guy. There they are. Anaha, Volker, Lloyd, Dragoo, and Gillespie. From Southeast, the offensive line, Spelt, Spinar, Baker, Stedman, and Albert. First play of the ball game. Blaclatchy with a handoff goes to Anaha and he fumbles the ball and I believe, yep, Creighton's got it. Just as I said, Joe, it, it couldn't have happened sooner. Great defensive teams cause turnovers and this is a tremendous break as Andy Getz gets on the ball. It's, it's just a tremendous break for Prep. A lot of people thought Southeast and their defense were going to, oh, great pop as it jumped out of there, Joe, and got all over it. Ryan Murtaugh, whose daddy used to play an awful lot of linebacker for Bob Devaney. Jerry was on top of the football. And we've got now Creighton on offense with Jerry Durland at quarterback. Number 14. Handoff in the middle goes to McCann. And he has got, what, a couple of yards? And Lincoln Southeast meeting the stopper and stops him about a two-yard gain, second and eight. Here are the backs and receivers. Durland, we told you about. Running back Jason Williams and McCann. Mullen, Thornton, and Pripe. Pripe is that tight end big guy out on the outside. Stinson, Bomaka, Smith, Brown, and Burgess. Prep breaks her huddle. Second down and about eight to go. After a fumble recovery, they're at the 15-yard line of the Knights. Durbin looks them over. High formation. Hand off to Williams. Comes left side. Finds a hole. Is near the 10. Joe, that was a real nice hole. The offensive line opened up a little crack. He hesitated for just a moment and then barreled through there. And he would think that Creighton Prep is in four down territory, but uh, you don't know. There's the defensive line. Samuel, Alberg, Davis, McIntyre, and Nietzsche. You saw them in an introduction. 
They got a tough task right now. It's third and three for the Jays in four down territory. They're at the 10. Fumble recovery, first play. Creighton Prep, three times champs, going for a four tonight. Pretty good position right off the bat. This is a spread formation back to throw. Durbin looks, throws it. It is incomplete, out of bounds. Durbin trying to hit Scott Thornton, his wide receiver. Joe Jeff Stick was the nearest guy to the play. Joe, it kind of tells you what Creighton Brett thinks of the Southeast defense. It was only about two and a half yards there for a first down instead of run the ball, which is really their power game. They throw the ball on that two and a half yards, maybe trying to catch them a little bit off guard, but I'm sure there's a lot of respect for that defense in there too, and now we're going to go for three. Right. This is Mike Tatton, and field goals this year. He's two for two. He kicks the short ones, and he's 30 of 32 in point after. This would be about a 27-yarder from an angle. Low snap, put out, blocked. Southeast with a block, and picked up and knocked out of bounds, Matt Nitsche. How do you like this for excitement right out the bat? A fumble and a block field goal drive. Joe, I tell you, you just can't say enough about those defenses. Uh, I'm not trying to be a real soothsayer here, but I did mention that off the top that the defenses were going to dominate this ball game. And you get a break right by Creighton Prep, and then a turnover now. Joe, what you saw there was that the holder for Creighton Prep had a little bit of trouble in getting a hold of that ball because the snap hit him in the chest and it delayed him getting it down just a little bit. That caused the block. That was Ron Samuel being congratulated on the outside, number 45. Pitch back, going outside is on a high, and he can't turn the corner. Prep was there. No gain. T.J. DiBiase at the defensive left end for the junior Jays makes the stop. So it'll be second and uh, almost 10. DiBiase, Bryant, Longo, Pfeiffer, and Collins. Murtaugh, Laffey, and Robinson at the linebacker spot for the junior Jays. LaRondo, Anderson, Leffler, and Bolton are the deep guys. Lincoln, Southeast, second down, and almost a ten, full 10 yards to go. Spread this time. Back to throw, Anaha being chased. He's back at the five, gets it away, it's way short. Well, at least uh, when he was retreating there, he was going into no man's land, and he had enough time to look up and get rid of that ball. He could have been tackled for a huge loss, though. That was a flea flicker. They're trying to go back to quarterback Brad McClatchy. They're unveiling some stuff real early. Jim Collins, number 24, Prep was putting the chase on. Here it is again. Sit Watch on, now. Sit on the replay. He just keeps retreating and retreating. I don't know where his receiver was at first, but he didn't look like he wanted to throw it very much, but he did get it unloaded, which was the major thing. Pretty good for third down and almost 10 to go. See what Southeast comes up with. Back, McClatchy on the draw play. On a hard, not nearly enough. In fact, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Great and Pratt's defense has been super in the opening two series. That was John LaRondo, the cornerback. Made the stop that time, number 40. Fourth and very long, about a dozen for Lincoln Southeast. Well, Joey's going to have to punt here, and that, this is going to give Creighton Prep good field position again. They're not going to knock it down too far, uh, so they should have maybe inside of their own territory get this ball. It'd have to be a great punt to get it outside of the 50-yard line. Jason Crystal is the guy that's deep for Creighton Prep. Kicker is Matt Lloyd. Gets one down around midfield. Crystal on the run. is flagged down just about the time he got his fingertips in the ball near the 46-yard line. Matt Nitsche down quickly makes a stop for Lincoln Southeast Knights. With 8.17 remaining, it is nothing and nothing, and Prep will be in the Lincoln Knights territory to start their second offensive possession. Spot the ball on 46-yard line. Wide to the left side, that's Scott Thornton, top of your screen. Durbin hands it off. Straight ahead goes John McCann from the fullback spot for a couple of yards. Matt Mitchy, the defensive end. The leading tackler with 127 on the year. 6'3", 180-pounder, number 85 made the stop. Gain of, well, let's see where they spotted. About three yards, second and seven. Direction, the ball carrier was 35, John McCann. So it'll be second down coming up. No score if you just got here. 740 to go opening quarter. Listen for all the marbles in Class A. Wide to the left side is Crystal. 
Durbin calls his signals, looks at a five-man front. In motion is McCann. Flip to Williams, turns the corner, gets his first down, keeps going inside the 30-yard line to around the 28. Neil Volker shoved him out. Adrian, you're right in front of all the action. What's it look like? So on that play there, a Creighton Prep went to an unbalanced line. They moved uh, their tight end over to the left-hand side of the field and uh, moved that to the wide side of the field. That's why they got an extra blocker over there, able to pick up really good yardage to the outside. So Creighton Prep using that unbalanced line. Williams at 6'2", 185, has averaged five yards every time he's touched the football this year in a game. The Knights trying to rally behind their mascot, as you saw. Prep first and 10 to 28. Hand off up the middle. Sliding off tackles John McCann, but just for a yard or two, whole center of the Knights line. Chad Davis, the nose guard, was in there, number 66. A gain of two, it'll be second and eight. Here's again. That's still a good defense again there. Boy, the linebackers of the heart of this uh, defense, the Knights defense, and they really buried him right in the middle of the line. They have more tackles than I had in about eight years of playing football, Jeff. 26-yard line and second down and eight to go. Open field on the right side for Krupp. Durbin wants to throw. Looks, fakes, pumps. Throws it long. Going for Crystal. Got it. Is he in? Yep. Touchdown. Oh, what a great catch, Joe. That was right out there on the fingertips. And Crystal, unbelievable catch. I mean, that was an NFL catch to get the hands on it and then to keep that one foot in bounds as he slid out. Just a tremendous throw also. And he's a happy young fella as he goes off the field here. Now we're going to see it again as he throws it back, cocks it, and boy, just really hangs it out there, Joe, as you see the lights passing by. Now watch those fingers. Oh. My goodness, the finger catch was tremendous. He had enough room to keep his feet in. It was just a great, great catch. We're going to see the extra point here now. Tap will try to make it seven. Put down and is up. It is good, I believe we'll see. Yep, that's it. So it's seven nothing. We've got 6.38 to go, and Creighton Prep in their second possession on a picture pass. Durbin to Crystal leads it. We'll be right back. Rep leads at 7 nothing. Quickly to sideline reporter Adrian Fiala. Well, Joe, what happened on the play is Jason Crystal ran an up and in and then headed for that flag in the end zone. Probably as good a route as you're going to see in high school football. So excellent fingertip catch, as Dan pointed out. They're in the end zone, one foot in. Great play. There it is again. And I'll tell you, that pass, if it had been a few inches further, Crystal could not possibly have gotten his feet down. It would have been a few inches shorter. He couldn't have made connections. 46 yards, four plays. It took him a minute, 39. Durbin to Crystal, and it's 7-0 with Tatton's extra point. So Creighton Prep, they have uh, won the last three. The Knights have not been here since 1976 and 77 when they won it back to back. But in the series with Creighton Prep, they lead it three games to one. Those other two ball games were not finals. Brian Rue will kick it off. We've got Stick Deep along with Anaha. This guy is very precise in his kickoff, <laughs> didn't he, too? Got to make sure everything's right with his club out in front 7-0. That's Anaha deep. Stands at the three-yard line. That's the 10, the 15. He's got some room. He's bumps into his own man and a Creighton tackler at the same time. Sean Fahey off that uh, kickoff team. And as he cut outside, had he not lost momentum, it still might have been some kind of play. He looked uh, he looked just like Dana Brinson as we're seeing the replay here, Joe. He's got a lot of speed and breaks to the outside and just can't, his own man just can't quite get out of the way and give him a little bit of room. But he was out there hunting somebody to block anyway, Joe. John is a Nigerian out of uh, 5'10", 165 pounds, been playing with a knee injury much of the year. Back to throw as McClatchy throws it long. Everybody is there, and it's knocked down. 
two defenders. Ada was a target, but Leon Bolton was up and almost made the interception. Number 92, the free safety. Boy, both these teams are surprising as they start out here. Joe, as you can see, this is not Southeast game to be throwing it, but they're throwing it on first down, which I do think is very, very good. Now let's go to the side run. Adrian, pick it up. Well, Dan, what happened was on that big play, uh, Chuck Mazursky, the head coach of the Southeast Knights, wanted to go to a big play early in the game. He feels that that's really their bread and butter in this contest. Out they come, second and ten. McClatchy runs, the option play, no place to go. White shirts were everywhere, and he is going to take a loss of about three yards. Kyle Emsick and Junior Bryant, who is probably considered at 6'4 and 278. He's just a junior. He is probably considered the number one Nebraska football prospect for college ball. He most certainly is, Joe. Uh, Tom Osborne speaks very highly of him. And, well, for a matter of fact, anybody in uh, college football does. And uh, being only a junior, but he's a man as big as he is. Out they come. And now they took too long to get the play away. McClatchy is bumped, but I believe the clock had run out. There was third and 12 they have a time, out. time to get the play away and we still got 5:30 to go we've got a timeout by lincoln southeast they're down 7-0 5:30 to go first quarter we'll be right back <laughs> halloween is past that father time i tell you it doesn't seem to register with creighton they have won it three times in a row, going for four, got a 7-0 lead, and the Knights trying to untrack their offense. Just been stagnant so far, fumbled on the first play. McClatchy on the run, throws a pass, it is complete. The Dragu goes out of bounds, but he got the ball before he skidded out at around the 33-34 yard line. Mike Lapp was the nearest guy to him. And Joe, they're going to have to kick anyway because it was a great catch, pretty good throw here as he turns back to the outside, but he's going to be about three yards short of the first down, so they're going to have to kick it. That was a marvelous job of reversing his field. He was leaning the other way, and he had to dig hard just to make that diving catch. Jason Crystal is back at his own 30-yard line. Matt Lloyd will get the ball away from around his 22. A little bit of rush. Good kick. Crystal waits for it. Now he's going to fair catch it. Well, that, guy, that guy can kick, Joe. I don't mean to interrupt you there, but as I said on the first kick that he had to heck a heck of a kick to get it out past the 50-yard line, and he did. He put it back to the 55, and that one there is uh, about a 46-yard kick and with a lot of hang time, so I think that's why the Creighton Prep uh, kid decided that he was going to take a fair catch. Wind not a big factor tonight. It's just more of a breeze, although they tell us there's some snow in the offing. Some of our folks may be out today looking in the North Flat, know what we're talking about. KNOP on Channel 2. Prep with the ball. Durbin with a handoff to Williams. Nothing. I'll tell you, they haven't had a chance to show it too much. That was Matt Nitsche, number 85. Volker, number 40, and Emsick, number 43, are two of the highly regarded high school linebackers in the state. Middle linebackers, Brian Bach. Emsick was the state Class A leading tackler, number 43 out there. Not that big at 5'10", 185. He had 244 on the regular season. So Southeast can play some defense. Creighton got a fumble, took it in on a marvelous pass. Great reception by Jason Crystal of a Durbin rainbow. It's second down and about nine. On the run, Durbin wants to throw, got his target, and is it a catch or not? No. He was juggling it as he went out of bounds. That was Scott Thornton, and he tried to put it away, but I think that you'll see that he did not have possession. The official right on top of the place says no. Here's a look at it again, Dan. I tell you, what a, what a try here, though. It goes from one hand, one hand to the other, back to the other, and then almost pulls it in, but it pops out right at the end. Just because those shoulder pads are so hard up here, Joe, is why it popped out for the second time. Look at it now. He gets it almost put back away here, and it bangs it off the shoulder pad, and it pops out. That's why. Adrian, on the sideline, what are some of the defensive philosophies? I know you talk to both coaches as they come back to play-by-play -play here. Third and 12. Durbin wants to pick up a dozen. Looking over the middle, he's got Crystal and I decides to run a fumble. Great prep recovers, it's Williams on top of the ball. It will not be enough for the first down. It'll be fourth and long coming up. 
Now let's try to pick up Adrian Fiala. Adrian? Well, Dan, what both coaches really agreed upon tonight, if, if anything, and they said defense would dictate who won this football game. They were very much concerned with uh, how that was going to go defensively. So Coach Mazursky said, I think I need to go for the big play, and that's what he's tried to do here tonight on a couple of occasions. Brayton Prep's defense has just been magnificent thus far. That blitz, the thing they expected most, has been the key for the Prep defense. Little Jays will be kicking this time. Anaha is deep, driving kick put up by Rue, takes a bounce around midfield, back at the 35. Anaha to the 40, to the 44-yard line. And Joe, this is the first town that Lincoln Southeast has had any type of field position whatsoever past the uh, run back that they got off the kickoff. Now, I think they'd be able to get out here and sort of grind it out a little bit, go to their running game, test that, see what they can do, and see if they can't put together a good drive. It was Jeff Forbes downfield to make the stop for the Junior Jays. Hey, I'll tell you, these four games that these two teams have been involved in, two of them decided by one point, one by three, the biggest margin was 11 to get here. And Prep had to beat Central just to get in the playoffs. McClatchy wants to throw up and overthrows his intended receiver. Going for Gillespie is tied in. Very well designed play there, though. Kind of run down the line on the Barely series and then raise up and try to get it to Gillespie. He just overthrew him a little bit, but I like the design of that play, Joe. Gillespie's got some connections back at Southeast. His mother works at the school. He's an awfully good baseball player, a catcher that I think is going to get, they say, is going to be offered a major league contract. A good blocker, a good receiver, but he couldn't, couldn't get tall enough for that one. Second and ten. McClatchy, number 14. Pitch it back, coming to the opposite side. The stick on the end around, it goes nowhere. Junior Bryant is there, this far and no further. They stop him back of the 30, about right around the 39, 38 yard line. The prep defense, Joe, is just getting so much penetration. They're pinning all, penetrating all along the line of scrimmage. So when you run a reverse like that, and you got two players on the other side that have come across the line of scrimmage waiting on you. Nowhere to go there. Back in high school ball, you see something you don't see at the college level. A lot of two-way players, and Stick is one of them. The wide receiver is also a defensive stick, huh? Third down and very long for the Knights. Back to throw McClatchy, screen pass, throws it up the middle. He's got his man at the midfield stripe, and they're very close to the first down. Neil Volker at fullback, in addition to being the linebacker. And does his fall forward take him enough? It's close enough for a measurement, and they may have it without a measurement. I think they're going to bring the change in, Joe, because this really is close here. It's kind of a funny screen. He's downfield beyond everybody. He just blasted past his blockers and went on downfield. Maybe he saw that the quarterback was in trouble and read it early, as you see on the second replay here, and got out past his blockers, picked it up, and just barely, well, boy, if they marked it where his knees, that would not be a first down, but they marked it where it came down, and he does have the first down. So By half the football's length. That was screen. When you've got a team that's getting the penetration prep as a lot of draws and a lot of screen passes, sometimes will make them think twice before they put that much pressure on or some play action stuff. Adrian knows about that, and we'll get down to him for a comment in a moment. The Knights have moved across the 50 to the 46-yard line of Creighton Prep down 7 to nothing. Handoff breaking loose for a moment and cutting to the outside is Kyle Emsick, and he goes all the way down to the 10-yard line inside the 10 before Marcus Anderson, the quarterback, probably the last guy who could, brings him down. Emsick is a marvelous football player. He plays high back on offense. He plays linebacker on defense. Great speed. Here he goes. As you can see again, Joe, this is the same type of trap play that Nebraska runs. It's a quick opener. You only have to block two or three people at the line of scrimmage to get it going. And as you said, they did an arm tackle mix, missed. And boy, he just really busted it up the middle. I thought he was going to be gone. If he'd have went to all the way to the corner of the end zone, he might have scored, Joe. Marcus Anderson pursued that one for a long, long way before he caught up. The Knights down close. Handoff goes to Volker. Comes to the outside, inside the five, down to around the three. With a minute to go in the first quarter, Lincoln Southeast trying to get back and tie this one up. Leon Bolton, the free safety, made the stop for the Junior Jays. The ball you see spotted just inside the three-yard line. Joey, well, what a ball game here so far. We've had more excitement than this than we had almost in the entire Nebraska game Saturday. <laughs> McClatchy puts him down. 
Rolls back, gives it up, hitting into the middle is Anaha, and he's got it. With 38 seconds to go, Lincoln Southeast on the scoreboard, 7-6. to six. And what has been a very, very fun-filled, I don't think the coaches may look at it that way. Here's the play again, going over, and he has rolled over. It was Kyle Imsick, number 43, the same guy that set it up, got the touchdown. Volker will try to tie it up. It's down and it's up, and it is... Good. We got a tie ball game. 38 seconds left in the opening quarter. Prep seven, the night seven. We'll be right back. Seacrest Field in Lincoln. There's a touchdown, and that's MSIC number 43. He's in the end zone. Volker who will kick off for Lincoln Southeast. Got the place kick through and is tied at seven. Just over a half minute to go opening quarter. What a night. Can't believe it. Early November we would come up like this in the Midlands, but it's a beaut. Volker with a shorter kick this time, angling it over for a spot. Taken at the 20-yard line, back to the 25. Allen Robinson of the kickoff team just barely got to the 25. And the clock down to 32 seconds. Brad Blumenstock, number 17, at the bottom of the stack for the Knights. He made a good catch there over his head, Joe. As you said, it was a, a very short kick, and he had to retreat back. He was up in the blocking position. He had to retreat back to catch the ball. There you see the very good Lincoln Southeast drive, 55 yards in six plays, and two minutes and 23 seconds with the two-yard touchdown run. Prep ready to play. Durbin. Off an unbalanced line to the open field. Gives it to Williams. Comes that way. Off tackle for a couple of three yards. Not more than that. Again, Kyle Emsig right in the thick of things. A two-way player at 5'10 and 185. His dad's a coach. His mom's a teacher. He lettered in wrestling and track. And he's had four, count them, four fumble recoveries this year. End of the first period. 7-7. As the first quarter has come to an end, we've got a heck of a ball game. Glad you could be here with us. We'll be right back with period number two. Creighton Pep 7, Lincoln Southeast 7 after one. We'll be right back. And we're just happy wherever you're looking in that you could be with us. Folks out in Carney watching on KHGI Channel 13 and in Superior at KSNB Channel 4. Prep in white with the blue trim. Quarterback is Durbin, handoff up the middle. It is Jason Williams for a couple of yards. It was second and eight, and he did not pick up anything that will take much away from third and long. Matt Nitsche, the defensive end on the left side, at 6'3", 180 pounds. He's a leading tackler among the linemen with 127 on the year. Been much in evidence here tonight. Prep faced with third down, need about six for the first down. And Jason Williams is a, is a big kid, Joe, at 6'2", 185. He can really lower the boom on you in the middle of the line. Third and six. Let's see what Preppa likes to do. I got three flaggers to the side. Flip it outside. Crystal's got it. He is up. Flag is down on the play. He is short of the first down. Boy, Joe, that was, that's going to be a clip, I think. But, boy, that was really close. It looked like he had his head in behind there, and it shouldn't have been a clip. But I think that's what they're going to call. Yep, that's what they're going to call. Safety man Eric Algilber is number 18, who made two interceptions in the closing minutes as a guy that makes a stop here. Watch him. Right there, Joe. It had happened before our replay got to it, but uh, I, it was really close. I think maybe we'll be able to see it here. Yeah, you, oh, no, I know what he called now. He called a push. He pushed off with his hands. He had his head in front, but, Joe, he pushed off with his hands, and that's what they called the clip for. Look at that hit. Al Govers just took him away at six feet, 165 pounds. He intercepted a Grand Island pass in the last minute to save that ball game. There are the stats, fairly even, 32 and 25. One for 26 yards for the Jays, two for 17 for the Knights in the air. It's even on the scoreboard, 7-7. We're a minute into the second period. Durbin 
Planker wide to the right side, looks at him, throws to him. It is incom in short. I was going to say incomplete, and I was going to also say in intercepted because middle linebacker Brian Bach had the best shot of anybody. That one slipped out of his hand. Scott Thornton was the target. I tell you what, let's go down to the sideline and see what Adrian's perspective of the first quarter was. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan. Uh, when you have two defenses that blitz and do the sort of stunning that they do, as we see with Creighton Prep and Southeast, you're going to see those uh, little spot passes, the screen passes, and all the other things, uh, the short, quick plays that you'll see against blitzing defenses. That's what these coaches intended to do this evening. Rule will stand back on his two-yard line, gets it away. Boy, that was supposed to be a block. Coming up, Anaha tips and falls as he tries to... Reverses his field at the 45-yard line, but still the Knights, who have come from behind a tie at seven, pretty good field position at Creighton Prep 44. They certainly do, Joe, and uh, I think Anaheim was going down there because the Mack truck was about to run him over. <laughs> he was getting some grass in a hurry. But they do good, have good field position here, Joe, and the last time they had good field position, they were able to really open up their offense and move it on down the field for the score. I wouldn't be surprised to see them have a very good drive here. Anaheim's a deep man behind McCutcheon. Pitches back to him, goes to the left side. Gets around the corner, turns it on, and is finally shoved out of bounds around the 37. Well, this kid, remember he's playing with a knee injury. John Anaheim out of Nigeria has had an injured knee much of the year. And he was booted out of bounds by Marcus Anderson, but he picked up, let's see where they mark it, six yards on the play. It'll be second and four. He's kind of limping a little bit, Joe, as he comes back here, too. He took a, a real hard hit over there on the outside, and sometimes those areas that they have marked off with artificial turf for the players are really hard, and you can really take a bang on those. Up to the line, McClatchy. Hands it off in the middle to Kyle Emsick, but he is short of the first down. Not quite to the 35. As Trump is tough in the middle, and Ryan Murtaugh does the charge. He's got 103 tackles on the year. 6 1 and 185. Joe, I was talking about those areas with artificial turf where the players stand. Here comes another player off the field. And uh, Green, the quarterback at Millard South, early on in the season, got her in exactly on one of those situations. He cracked his ribs. Charging offside. McClatchy had have been jumping his count, and Ray Longo, the nose tackle, number 54, tried to anticipate, and actually he's tried to scramble back, but he'd made Good contact. Ball foul. That's, <coughs> that's one of those things that Nebraska faced on Saturday. Tom Osborne said that he thought it was because of a, a cadence count that they were varying, and I believe that exactly the same thing happened there. He was just varying his cadence. Uh, what you do there, Joe, is you go, hut, hut. And you just stop that cadence, and the guys will come if they're reading the cadence. And that's exactly what he did to pull them off sides. Gives the Knights a first down. Moves the ball down to the 32-yard line, first and 10. McClatchy fakes, pumps once, throws it long. He's got stick. Touchdown. Joe, what a fake there. The fake just pulled everybody up. They faked it to the inside. It's the old in and then turn to the outside and go down the field. And one of these guys got on their fingertips tonight. They must have stick them. It's, uh, it's illegal in the NFL, but it must not be here because look at this thing stick right there on the top of his fingers. Another great catch, Joe. We've seen at least four or five catches. As you see here again, this ball is just oh, right out there on the top. What a great throw. Just a tremendous play by a high school football team. You don't see that execution that many times. Here's a try for extra point. Volker puts it up and through. And Lincoln Southeast behind 7 to nothing with two quick ones. 9.34 to go in the half has come on to lead at 14-7. to seven. We'll be right back. Adrian Fiala on the sidelines. 
Well, Joe, on that play, Jeff Stick, 6'2", uh, 170 pounds, put in, really ran a great route. He ran an up-and-out route. In other words, he took his man to the inside of the field and really just faked him totally out of the play and then headed for the post on a zig pattern. So, really, again, an excellent route and a good pass by McClatchy. Well, that's the second one for a touchdown. McClatchy with that pump fake really set him up. Retreating is Casey Belinsky into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. His momentum took him in. He did not go in under his own power to catch the ball, and that means it comes out to the 20. Had he gone in, he would have had to come out. Yeah, Joe, he must have touched the ball down there as his hand went down. Of course, as long as you can put your hand down, you're all right. If your knee goes down, then you're down. But if the ball goes down along with it, now let's see here. Oh, there's, there's really no reason for that to be a touchback. He could have come out if he wanted to. That quarterback, Josh Ludke, first time for the Blue Jays. Unbalanced line to the open field side. Handoff goes up the middle. And it is John McCann for short yardage, brought down by Neil Volker. Adrian? Well, Joe, in high school football, once that ball crosses the plane of the goal line, it's an automatic touchback, and you can't advance it out of the end zone. That's the explanation of the reason why that ball uh, was spotted for a touchback and comes out to the 20. What has to happen for the safety, then? Can they call it? Where, if you take it under your own power and, and, and go in there, can it be the safety on the same call? Then? If you take it in on your own power, that's true. If the momentum carries you in there, uh, then it's down. Ludke with a pitch to Williams comes to the sidelines, turned it on, gets over the 30, almost the 35. In fact, he did get it there. Jeff Stick knocked him out of bounds. Stick, a two-way player for the Knights. They lead it 14 to 7. 8.53 to go, and there's Williams heading back. Just over Adrian's head there, you saw that little halo, you know, was up there. <laughs> that must be why he was right, huh, Joe? I'll tell you, you can't throw the ball much better than McClatchy's throwing tonight on these two touchdown passes. There's Williams stats. Averaging five yards per carry going in. He's about, uh, what, seven tonight, 6.8. His long one has been 16. And Creighton Prep now from... From uh, their own 35-yard line, they have a first and 10 on they, Williams' run. They must have, Joe, uh, some equipment problems there. Uh, they took number 20 over to the sideline, looked at him a little bit, and then brought him back. Okay. There's the yardage so far in the ball game. You see the rushing yardage is pretty even. The Knights have a big edge in passing yardage. It gives them their 27-yard margin in total. Unbalanced to the right, they run that way. John McCann going outside, and he gets a couple, and then they take it away. Kyle Emsick led the charge. A lot of black shirts in on it. Going to be second and about seven. Yard mark is a little bit tough to pick up because they do not stick up from the side. You see him on the side of the field. That's the 38-yard line where it's marked. They would need to get to the 45 to pick up the first down, second and seven. He jumped over the pile there, Joe, and you said he went back, but I, I love these high school football games. You know, all the shirts out, nobody's got their shirt tucked in, and they got a little dirt and a little sweat on them already. Great high school football. Josh Ludge, a quarterback. Flag goes down as he gets the rush, throws it. It is incomplete. Let's see what the flag's about. Brad Blumenstock was the nearest. They were trying to throw downfield to Scott Thornton. Blumenstock came close to an interception. The referees will control the flag going down immediately. Okay. A illegal motion. Number 86. Adrian. Joe, just to comment or mention, uh, there was some movement in that offensive line of Creighton Prep. I believe the split end moved and also that inside tackle moved. And that's why we're going to see a penalty now marked off against uh, against these Blue Jays. However, they may, they may decline the penalty. Decline. They want it third and long. Third down. Right. So it'll be third and seven for Creighton with 8.08 to go. Some outstanding receiving tonight. Some good passes hung up there, and the receivers got him and hung on. That would be a great opportunity for the Knights' good defense to pick one off, Joe. Lucky back, looking like he wants a rush. Now he throws it long downfield. Williams is there. He's got it. He may be gone. It's a foot race. That's a five. He's in. I'm telling you, Joe, you just don't think you're going to see this type of precision passing in high school football. But it has just been tremendous. That one was another 
look to the outside and then turn back to the post and go right down. Now let's go down to Adrian. How was that one, Adrian? Uh, I'll tell you what, Danny, great play by Lutke because he was staring a big hit right in the face from Rod Samuel, number 45, the, red, the left defensive end from Southeast. As a matter of fact, Samuel really tattooed him right between the one and the zero on his chest, but Lutke was able to put the ball into Williams and then Williams slip a tackle and uh, streak down the east or west sideline. Great play. Here's Tatton There's a trying kid. to tie it up, and it is up, and it is good. So it was 7-0, Creighton Prep. Then it was 7-7, and the Knights went in front 14-7. The Jays have come back. We've seen some kind of air attack tonight. Second quarter still has 7.58 to go. 14. For all the marbles in Class A, you see it tied at 14, almost eight minutes left. First half. Look at this again here, Joe. We've said several times that it was great. Now he pushes off just a little bit there on the defender, but he got away with it, and it was right on target as he went into the end zone. A great replay there to show a little bit of contact, but he was able to get into the end zone, and tremendous drive, Joe, with that great big pass at the end of it. 80 yards, five plays, took him a minute and a half. 61-yard TD pass, and I tell you, you run Jason Williams down from behind, you are moving. Rue will kick it off. We got Stick and Blumenstock deep. Big high kick. It'll take a long time to come down. It may bring rain. That's Stick out to the 25-yard line. Been waiting to say this, Joe. Stick got stuck. Marcus Anderson, the quarterback, number 23, makes the stop for Creighton. That's him. He's 5'8", 160 pounds. He's a team leader in interceptions with six. That is, incidentally, for Ludke, the eighth TD pass of the year. He hasn't had that many minutes, but he's had some awfully good stats. Tied at 14, 741, they go on the clock running. McClatchy at quarterback. In motion to the right side, they pitch back. Anaha, but whistles and flags all over the place. Joe, they've got a lot of calls, of course, as Adrian pointed out a minute ago. In high school football, which a lot of people who watch college football and pro football are not used to. One of those is on the line of scrimmage. If a guy lines up offsides, he can't then move and go back. And I think that's about what happened here. Here's a look at it. Uh, that's a little movement. little movement on that side. Let's go down to Adrian. Adrian? Well, Dan, another rule that's a little bit peculiar in college or in high school football is that if a team fumbles, either team can advance the ball. In college ball, of course, the defense can advance a fumble, but uh, in high school, that can be done. That's Matt Lloyd, top of your screen. Dragu, wing back to the right side. Anaha in trouble and dropped for a loss. Anaha faked by one, but T.J. Dibias, the left end for the Jays, not about to let him get away with some help from Ryan Murtaugh. Good ground level shot here, Joe. We've got great camera work in this ball game, along with a lot of great plays, and that was a tremendous defensive play. Got him right around the ankles, down he went. Murtaugh had him low, DBI's had him high, and it's second down and 20. After the penalty and a five yard loss, and tied at 14. The Knights only one back back. McClatchy throws it. Goes down deep, overthrown. There was some bumping going on. They were going for Matt Lloyd. He was bumped as he went downfield by Jason Crystal. Brings up a third down here, Joe. Third down and long. And uh, you'd think they would be back into that uh, passing pattern again, but it would be an awful good time also, Joe, for a draw. Both teams have been throwing the ball so well, I think a draw would work extremely well. McClatchy will be looking, running for his life. Goes it long. Got somebody there, and the kick's a catch. That's Matt Lloyd, and Matt Lloyd, in a lot of traffic, just reached out and grabbed him. I'll tell you, the passing and the receiving have been fantastic tonight. Lloyd had to have total concentration to take that away from the defenders. 
Joe, what was uh, marvelous about this is when the ball comes down, as you'll see, it comes down in a crowd. There are three people around this, and he just comes down right there in his hands. As you mentioned, the toughest thing about that is concentration. With somebody waving their arms in front of you as the ball is approaching, it's extremely hard to concentrate well enough to catch this ball, and he does it. Uh, Joe, I'm telling you, I am so impressed with the passing game. Lloyd and Dragu double setbacks to the outside. They go inside to Emsick for a couple of yards over the left. Five, two, or three. Down close to the 32-yard line. Nose tackle, Ray Longo makes a stop. Adrian? Well, not only was that a great catch, but it was a great throw by Brad McClatchy, number 14, the quarterback, because, again, he took a great hit by that pursuing uh, Creighton Prep defense. He did uh, well enough to get the ball off, and to get it off and have it caught, well, that takes some great effort. Great uh, great effort, Brad McClatchy. Penalty and a five-yard loss, and they come out of it with a long completion. They're in Creighton Prep territory. Tied at 14. Second down, about seven to go. McClatchy throws over the middle, but low. Going for Crystal, or for... Uh, Dragu, Marcus Anderson, the nearest defender. The pass under throwing a little bit. Joe, he had both guys open. Uh, both of them were going down on the same side of the field. And Dragu most certainly was open on a little slant pattern there. If he could have just worked the ball in about number high, it would have been a great catch. And then they would have to brought him down before he battled into the end zone. McClatchy, not a big guy, 5'8", 155. He has won every start, every ball game he started in quarterback since the ninth grade. The night is tied right now. McClatchy fakes. Fakes, pump fakes, being chased. Throws it under tackle, and he almost made connection with Anna out of the backfield. McClatchy looked for all the world like he wasn't going to get that one away. Mike Lapp had him, and so did John LaRondo up from the cornerback spot. How does he do this, Joe? As you can see him retreating here off the replay, he's got people wrapped all over him. Again, the pump fake downfield. Now, look. He's got guys all over him, and he still delivers the ball. This ball should have been caught also, and if it had been caught, as you can see, it was nothing but open field in front of him. Anna, watching the play, might have been convinced he was never going to be able to get it away. We got a field goal try, Adrian. You bet, Joe. It's going to be tried by Volker, number 40. But on the play, Anoha, he really had the ball right at his fingertips, but he also had a large case of ears because it was great pursuit by the prep defense. Here we go with the kick. Blumenstock will hold it. Volker will put it up. Fake. Blumenstock throws the pass over throws. He was going for Sean Gillespie. Joe, I just didn't have time to get that in there. You almost had to know that was a fake. That was going to be a almost a 55-yard field goal, and that's awfully long for high school. So you thought there'd be a fake there, but it worked. I'm telling you, the guy was open, and all we had to do is just get the ball to him. He just overthrows a little bit. Those fingers that time weren't long enough to hit it, Joe. Coach of Southeast, Chuck Mazursky, is a Penn State Joe Paterno guy. Been in the high school ranks for 10 years. Here's Lubke again. Came in in relief of Jerry Durbin. They've alternated at that spot much of the year. Pitch out to Williams. He gets caught. Makes a couple of yards by Kyle Emsick as he falls forward. Kyle got him. He fell forward to close to the 35-yard line, second and eight. 5-0-1 to go. 14 and 14. Prep has led. They have trailed. It's tied. And we've had a heck of a ball game for the Class A championship on an absolutely, as I said before, unbelievable football night weather-wise in Lincoln. Second, let's call it nine. Lucky, long count, pitch back, they double reverse, it goes to Crystal, gets a lot of ground. Oh, my Flag goodness. goes down at 30 to 35 to 38 yard line. I would guess from the where it went down, it's going to be a clip call. You can have that happen so much, so often on a double reverse. Uh, most certainly, Joe, and the bad thing about it is, is it, it didn't need to be done. As you can see here on the replay, it doesn't need <coughs> to have him clip because the guy is already by it. So he goes ahead and makes it. Boy, again, that was close. All you're supposed to be able to do is just get the head on the inside of the ball of the uh, guy you're trying to hit. Didn't look a clip to me, but they sure called it. Eric Altgilbers made the stop, the safety man, but the flag had negated that play, and now the referees are going to step it off, and it's going to move it back to around the 25-yard line. 25. Forward flag is up around the 43. we got to have 18 yards, and here comes a step off. It's going to be longer than that. A clip that will move it all the way back to, let's call it the 12. 
between the 12 and the 13. Joe, this is going to be second in a barnyard. <laughs> 31, they'll call it on the scoreboard. Four and a half minutes to go. Here we go again, and as you can see, the clip coming, and yes, good call. He did catch him in the back. On the other replay, it looked like he had his head around the side, but instead he caught him in the back. Scott Thornton goes wide to the right. Ludke calling the signals. Ed Williams at the eye back spot gives it to him, goes right side, nothing. Wrapped up by, very quickly by Ron Samuel. Ron is the only sophomore starter, number 45, his uncle Tony, I bet you know, defensive end coach for Nebraska Lincoln. And if they don't do something here, Joe, of course, picking up 31 yards is going to be a lot on third down. So I think what Creighton Prep will want to do is try to knock something off, maybe out into the flat or maybe just a little hookup, and then see if the guy who receives the ball can't run for the first down. But I don't think they'll try to put it up for the whole thing. The Knights put four men up front. Ludke retreats, rolls left, looks, goes cross field. Going down for Thornton, it is knocked away. And Thornton almost made it on the second effort. That was Blumenstock, the defender that knocked it in the air. And Thornton, with a second effort, came close to making connections with it. Yeah, this ball, Joe, is just up in the air too long. At first, Lloyd is open, but he fires it, takes a great hit just as he turns it loose. Maybe that's why it stayed up in the air so long. The ball is just up there, but he almost caught it anyway. That was Chad Davis. Put the rush on Ludke. Got the shoulder running about the time he let it go. Rule will stand in right on the goal line to get this one away. It's a rush. He gets it away. Kick. Stick waits for it at midfield. It drops his knee on the 48-49 yard line. 3-11 to go. So we'll have a turnover. It's tied at 14. The Knights will have possession inside Creighton territory. We'll be right back. 3-11 to go in the first half. Now the Knights, who are on a roll, they lost their first two ball games of the year to Omaha Central and Grand Island. Since then, they've won seven. Then got a win over Central in the playoffs and 7-3 over Grand Island. That win over Central was 13-12. McClatchy throwing deep. Oh, he was gone if he could catch up with it. McClatchy. Leffler was trying to... Uh, protect but Bulling was a guy trying to catch up with the football Steve Bulling is a 6'2 200 pounder with six catches this year he's a senior a lot of tight ends that the Knights will use Chuck Mazursky of Southeast coached football in Illinois for seven years a catchment for three years before coming here McClatchy again going to throw it deep almost the same play this time he makes connection same guy Bulling and he's gone he come right back with it my goodness, Joe. It's Gillespie. I beg your pardon, 81. Same position and almost the same play, but Gillespie had the ball laid up, got to it. That's his ninth catch and his third TD of the year. You're exactly right, Joe. It was exactly the same play. They say, what the heck? It was open that time. We just overthrew it, and he really lays it out there. Now, he really floats that thing up. Defender has good position and tries to make it, knock it away, but he takes it on in for the touchdown, and now down to Adrian. Well, Dan, you would think that with 3-11 on the scoreboard to the half, the Southeast would want to run that time off. But again, in that big play philosophy that Chuck Mazursky talked about prior to uh, this game getting underway, they're going for that big play. They're going to score. What a play. Volker will try to make it 21-14. And he does. So now the Jays will have almost three minutes to try to do something about it. They were ahead one time 7 to nothing. Now they trail 21-14. to We'll be back with the final three minutes of the first half in just a moment. Yeah. 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 2.59, take of the clock, less than three minutes. That's the score. Southeast has trailed and led, and so has Creighton Prep. Here's the pass that did it. Gillespie on the receiving end. And he didn't have much room either. Into the end zone, and it's 21-14, and Volker's kick with Crystal and Valensky deep. 
Brought back out to, across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Went a little bit shorter, and T.J. DiBias made the grab and brought it back. So let's see what Craig Prep elects to do. 48 yards, two plays, took only 12 seconds. Southeast leads at 21-14. This was supposed to be a defensive battle and may still be, but there have been some great catches, great passing, and a lot of excitement in the uh, minutes so far. Let's look the at quarterback, flag goes down, and this will negate the play. McCann tries the right side, got a couple of yards, but they were whistling, and I believe they were trying to stop a Neil Volker, the place kicker, the do-everything guy. He was an all-state place kicker in 87. Basketball track, National Honor Society. 5'10 and 210 pounds, number 40. He's every place that you look, it seems like, for Lincoln Southeast. Joe, you talk about that uh, great defensive ball game, and I think partly why they're able to operate with these big play philosophy as uh, Adrian's been talking about is that both defenses are so aggressive. Both defenses have won ball games for them now and with that aggressive enough, you're able to complete those passes. First and 15, let the quarter. They got Crystal Plank to the right side, hand off to Williams over the guard spot for, well, not enough to make up the penalty. It's gonna be second down and about 12. He's around the 28 yard line. Adrian? Well, Joe, what I think we'll see now, I'll probably have to eat these words, but Creighton Prep is looking at two minutes on the board right now. I think they will try to grind out a first down here and go into the half, uh, go into the locker room with uh, seven points behind. To give up a long pass or an interception right now and give Southeast another opportunity to score would probably be a, a misfortune they can ill afford uh, to have right now. So I would expect perhaps just to grind it out and get it over with. Second and 12, that's Crystal wide to the left side. They pitch it, fake the handoff this time and coming out. Outside's McCann. Can't turn the corner. Got to the 30-yard line and wrestled out of bounds by Jeff Stick and Brian Bach. For those plays to work, Joe, where you fake a reverse, you have to be going up against a team that pursues extremely well. The only reason they're going to go for that fake reverse is because they're keying off the wide receiver. They key off the wide receiver if he turns and goes back around and he knows it's going to be a reverse. That time, Southeast did not go for it and stayed at home. Five-yard gain brings third and eight. Junior Jays with a minute three to go in the half. Ludgate brings them out. Rolls right, wants to throw. Fakes, throws it long, going after it, and out of bounds, trying to catch up with it. Scott Thornton, Jeff Stick was there for the Knights. It'll be fourth and eight, 51 seconds to go. And the Knights are going to get the ball back before the half comes to an end with the lead. Here's the play. That's right, Joe. And with Adrian's philosophy of trying to run out the clock, this play didn't make any sense. And I know you're trying to crack a big one, but if you're going to do that, go out and try to do something on first and second down. Now what they've done is they've thrown the incomplete pass. They're going to punt to Southeast, and Southeast is going to have 51 seconds to get something done. Awful nice defensive move to bat that ball away without pass interference. That was by Jeff Stick. Here's the kick by Creighton Prep. Going to come down around the 40 and take a reverse bounce back around the 44. Not too bad for the Knights. They got a seven-point lead in 45 seconds to try to move the ball downfield. I believe, yeah, we've got some flags down around midfield. Let's see what it's all about. A couple of them dropped between the 45 and 50. Here's the replay. The punt. Penalty coming up. And they're still talking about it. The two officials conversing. Now they're going to talk with the Creighton Prep captain. Fifteen-yard penalty was assessed against the Knights. Does not give Creighton Prep the first down, so they'll go on defense. But it does move the ball back to Lincoln Southeast 29-yard line. With three quarters of a minute left to go and a seven-point lead to see what they elect to do. That was a big break, though, Joe, for Creighton Prep, because I think Southeast might have tried to get it in there. McClatchy is going to quarterback sneak it in and maybe let the clock run out. McClatchy just leans forward. He had Dragoose head out to the outside. Long going, Murtaugh. 
the tackle as the ball goes forward about a yard. 30-yard line, second to nine. We've got 28 seconds to go. And Livingston will have some special guests for you to meet at halftime, so stick around. Condi Sargent will be with us. We'll do a lot of talking, Joe, about uh, the rest of the playoffs around the state. We'll have some highlights from uh, the Lexington Imperial game, which was a heck of a ball game, Joe. Uh, Lexington won that ball game 26-23 in overtime. And we'll also look at another couple of Class B teams, uh, which are Blair and Wahoo. Of course, Blair and Wahoo, when they both played, were undefeated. Uh, Blair won the ball game fairly easily and now is uh, in the championship, and we'll have that at halftime, Joe. Also happy to have the folks in Hayes Center at KWNB, Channel 6, and I'll be in Nebraska, KCAU, Channel 8. Looking in tonight, Prep has elected, I think, to use their timeouts to see if maybe they can stop this quarterback sneak into the line and perhaps find some way to get the ball back one more time before the half comes to an end. So the Knights will huddle back on their 20. Prep over the ball at the 30. It's second down and nine to go. See the graphic there, Joe, and who would have thought the Knights would have had 153 yards passing? Omaha is wide to this side. McClatchy looks. His ball is tipped up in the air, but it goes out of bounds. Hey, if that one had been tipped and stayed inbounds, that one could have turned this ball game around quickly. It was coming near the sidelines. They got his arm, and the, as McClatchy he was looking at Onaha going down the sidelines, and Jerry Luffler was a guy nearest to it, so it stops the clock on an incomplete pass. That's up the Knights didn't really want to do anything. Let's go down to Adrian on the sideline now. Adrian, that was kind of a shank, wasn't it? I, I'll tell you what, it was a, a high school knuckleball is what it amounted to. Uh, again, it was tipped, and it just took a, a quick right turn. Back to live action. Here's the last play of the half. Dragu up the white side, but it's Volker up the middle. Neil Volker across to the 20, to the 35 yard line. Brian Mouton makes a stop, not quite, because Prep uses another timeout, and they, with fourth and four, four coming up, may have a chance to get their hands on the football. I tell you, Joe, they are really, both coaches are really kind of sparring back and forth here as Adrian set it up that the Jays maybe were going to run this thing out. They ran the first two plays and then tried to catch Southeast napping and threw it way downfield. Then you turn right back around with the Jays calling a timeout and Southeast says, well, they're not going to think we're going to try to throw the ball and they come back out and throw it. Now throwing it, of course, the, uh, they threw it out of bounds, so the clock stopped, and it gave the Jays a chance to take another timeout. So both coaches kind of trying to catch the other one sleeping right here. I'm going to send Jason Crystal back, anticipating a night pump with 14 seconds to go. Some of the cheerleading going on, and you see some of the folks out here tonight enjoying this one. You can't watch it and not enjoy it in that football. 21-14, Lincoln Southeast. Matt Lloyd is back on his 22. Crystal stands back in his 30, angling it. Pretty good foot. Crystal's going to have a chance to run it back from the 28. He is to the 40, up to around the 43-yard line. Clock shows two seconds, one. No time on the scoreboard, and I think that's it. Well, an exciting half. Creighton got on the scoreboard first, led it 7 to nothing. Trail 14 to 7, tied it up, and then fell behind. Officials are talking. Captains are listening, and they're going to tell them what the decision is. Wind is not a factor, even less of a factor now than it was earlier. Flag is hanging limp. So Southeast will be okay, fellas, defending the south go goal. Here are the scoring plays. It happened early after a fumble. Watch this catch by Jason Crystal. Fingertips and finger toe, or his toes in bounds. 46 yards, four plays, 139, and prep with the extra point. Led it seven to nothing, and that was very, very early in the ball game. Lincoln Southeast. That's Brad McClatchy at, with a handoff to a guy who just does it all, all the time. Emsick and Kyle rolling down the field, being chased. This is the one that set it up. 55 yards in six plays, 223. He took it in on a two-yard run moments later. We had a brand new ball game at seven and seven. Joe, that run, as I mentioned before, was very similar to the Nebraska run uh, when they break that trap up the middle. You only have to have a block a couple of guys, just a real crisp boom, boom, and you got her done. 
And run up the middle. That was 44 yards and only three plays, and it was 14 to 7 the Knights. McClatchy to stick, 31 yard TD pass. And it was a touchdown in favor of the home club. This is being played in the Western Division's home ballpark this year. Creighton Prep comes right back, 80 yards in five plays, a 61 yard TD pass. Josh Ludke came on in relief of, of uh, the starting quarterback. Got it to Williams, and Williams simply outlegged everybody. Extra point by Tatton, and it was 14 to 14. But with only 12 seconds, Lincoln went 48 yards in two plays. The biggie was a 48-yard TD pass, and it was uh, 21 to 14. And that's where it stayed as the first half came to an end. Adrian, and again. You haven't had the best viewpoint, maybe, but you've been closest to the action. Have you been eavesdropping in any of the huddles? Well, I haven't been able to get into the huddles, Joe, but I've got real big eyes, so I think that I can <laughs> uh, handle it that way. Just a quick report. Uh, John Anoha, the running back for Southeast, had a, a minute to visit with him just a, a bit ago. His knee is fine. He'll be ready to go in the second half. I uh, have been watching Creighton Prep over there. John Durbin, their quarterback, their starting quarterback, was warming up uh, to begin this second half here, so... I guess we'll have to wait and see if we're going to see uh, his play in the second half. But from the injury standpoint, it appears that both teams are healthy, they're ready, and again, that momentum factor, as we talked about before the halftime started with Southeast right now. It's going to be a very, very interesting second half. I think you're right. If it matches the first half, it'll be about all you can handle. Tom Jaworski has said a lot of people don't like a double quarterback situation. He says, I think it's worked out great for us. Durbin is done the job for the most part. Tell you the one thing that surprises me, McClatchy has not had overwhelming stats. He had 35 completions and 85 tries, only 41% for four touchdowns. He was intercepted twice in the regular season, but he has been right on the mark here. Long kick downfield from Volker. Preps got it. They bring it back out. Still on the run at the 30, out to the 35-yard line, and Casey Belinsky finally is stopped up at the 40 by Sean Francisco. So a good return and good field position for Prep as they try to get back even in the ballgame. Well, I think, Joe, that's exactly what they needed. They didn't need to get pinned down deep and have that uh, Southeast defense get all over them. They needed to get out where they can open up their offense, and that's what they've done. It's going to be Jerry Durbin who started the ballgame at quarterback starting the second half. Got Scott Thornton top of your screen flank to the outside. Durbin with a handoff goes to McCann. Left side, about two, three yards. So I would think that here in the second half, that what Creighton Prep's going to do is try to physical them a little bit. You know, show their strength, show their great running game, and see if they can't make this ball game a little bit shorter with the great offensive plays and the wide open football that we've had so far. Anybody can see that it is in southeast favor to play that way. So what I think Creighton Prep is going to do is come back out here and try to grind it out really tough-nosed football style. Saw the numbers on McCann. He's had a less successful night than he had most of the year. Pretty well contained under three yards per try. Pitch out goes. The McCann takes a handoff, and the Knights not fooled. They stop it at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be third down and long, and Kyle Emsick, the outside linebacker, was the guy who figured it out and was there to make the stop. The state Class A champion of making tackles, 244 for the year, and 66 of those were unassisted. Durbin brings them out. Prep down, seven points, 10.43 to go third quarter, just started. Third and six to go for the first down. Durbin looking, rolling, wants to run, got a lot of time, throws it complete. Did he get his feet down? Yes. First down, Creighton Prep. Scott Thornton. With Brian Bach right beside him, he had to put him down in a hurry, and he did. Gee, great throw again, Joe, and a great catch. We're going to see it on the replay here. He just lays it right there on the sideline. He puts him up. Now what's there? Boom, boom. Let's go down to Adrian. You see that one full view, Adrian? I tell you what, Dan, that play happened right down here in front of us, and it's unfortunate. Brian Bach just kind of lost his footwork on the play. He tripped up and uh, took himself right out of the play, and that allowed that reception to be made. It was good work, though, by Brian to get over there. Third and long first down by the Junior Jays. And they send Samuel wide to the left side. Durbin with a handoff to Williams, shakes loose a one. Down for about an eight-yard gain. He needed the 40, got to about the 42-yard line before Chad Davis 
brought him down along with Ron Samuel. A lot of the junior Jays, Joe, have got these uh, uh, different colored leggings on. You see Jason there with blue on. One of the guys on defense has got sort of a checkered type leg ornament on it. I suppose that's so they can follow each other around. Huh? Got Matt Mullen in the slot. Thornton is the bottom of your screen. Durbin at quarterback, second down and two for the first down. Up the middle, they got it, and still going. McCann comes to the outside. That's the 20, that's the 15, the 10, the 5, over. He's got it, and we've almost got a tie, and the happiest guy out there is the guy you're watching, John McCann. Jeff Stick got him right at the goal line, couldn't keep him out of the end zone. That's Jeff number one. Yes, sir, Joe, and we've got uh, we've got a flag on the goal line for, uh, I guess, celebrating or something. Adrian, you know what that flag's for as you we bet. watch the replay here? You bet, Dan. It's going to be on Lincoln Southeast for too much protesting on behalf of Jeff Stick, uh, who contested that call by the referee. So that will be the call. There we'll see the referee making that call on Southeast. Uh, Jeff Stick thought that he had forced that runner out of bounds right at about the one-yard line. However, I believe the runner was in from our vantage point. He was, in fact, in and made the touchdown. Maybe you got a, a different perspective of it from up there, but uh, he appeared to have that touchdown as we line up now for the extra point. You're exactly right, Adrian. Uh, but he was in. He was into the end zone. Now we got the extra point, and it is... It's good, and we've got a tied for the third time as Tatton is three for three. And the scoreboard is 21-21. A funny thing a moment ago, talking about McCann's stats, he, he really picked them up in just one try. Here's the where the protest came. Stick thought he had him. But I tell you, they were not about to keep McCann out of the end zone, and you see the marker there as he goes inside of it. Adrian, Joe, Pen on the penalty, it was a dead ball foul. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, as you can see now, I'm sure, on your screen, that uh, the prep has moved the ball up 15 yards or teed it up 15 yards from the normal kicking spot. A very significant factor because most certainly that's going to put Lincoln Southeast either at its 20 or starting out somewhere inside that 20. Here we go. Anaha is back at the goal line. Big high kick's going to carry well into the end zone. He's going to let it go. So, John Anaha was the nearest guy to it, but he just looked at it, watched it sail in. It's, well, he's got a flag down, hold everything up near midfield. It could be that Prep was offside. And what would you be offsides there, Joe? But it, I think you could see what Southeast was protesting a little bit. That is the tackler. And just as they went across that goal line, the ball did pop out on that replay. And I know we're not supposed to do this, but let's direct from the truck, uh, from up here to the truck. Maybe we can see that replay again, and you'll see the ball pop out here. They're going to kick it off again, and you're exactly right, Joe. If he had possession as he breaks the plane of the end zone. Watch McCann. He makes a great cut here. Blumenstock chasing him. Here it is. Just took his feet right out from under him and then aims for the end zone. That's stick catching up. Now watch it come out here. Just as they see the ball come out, just as he went across, but the referee was right on top of it. Now you can really see it from this angle if we have time to get it there before he kicks off. See that ball pop out. See it? But the key word is just as he went across. And exactly. just as he went across, it automatically is six. It's 21-21. And after the penalty, Prep will kick it again. Rue. And on Anaha is going to be are looking at it again, and they'll bring it out to the 20. And Southeast, who have trailed, led, tied, led, and now tied again, will have their first uh, possession in this current drive and um, this has been billed as a defensive battle and this indeed the only really team stats they've got they report from the state in defensive uh, total yardage but it was six shutouts this year but Southeast gonna have to put some more points on the scoreboard to break the tie. Joe just as you said it led tied led tied led tied that makes up to an interesting ball game. McClatchy He's got Dragoo wide to the right side. Handoff straight ahead for about three or four yards. Neil Volker from the fullback spot picks up a couple. Let's see what they mark it. Looks like it's going to be about the 22. It'll be second and eight. I wonder if uh, Lincoln Southeast won't try the same thing that I was talking about with prep. Now, they most certainly have had the big plays as what have kept it in this ballgame. 
but maybe a couple of first downs or a try at a couple of first downs at running the ball a little bit and shortening the ball game. Well, Clatchy puts him down. Second down and about eight yards to go. He's getting chased, throws it out, got a receiver there, but he can't catch up with him. They were going for Brian Bach out of the backfield. He'd replaced Volker at fullback, and he was there, but the pass a little bit long. And, Joe, they're doing an excellent job of throwing the ball. They had four receivers out that time. And as you can see, just overthrows a little bit again. But four receivers out on the pattern, and he's throwing the ball real quick. Very quick openers. He's only taking a two or three drop, step drop and then throwing the ball. Adrian, down to you. Dan, part of the problem with overthrowing the ball tonight by McClatchy is that, like on that play there, Junior Bryant, Junior J defensive tackle, who goes about six foot five, six foot six, was was in pursuit, putting the pressure on. He's got to throw over him, consequently an overthrow. They come after him again. This one's a little bit underthrown. A nice try, a grab, reaching out and trying to get it was Steve Bulling, but he could only get one hand on it. He couldn't grab it. And now it's going to bring up fourth and very long in a punting situation for the Knights. So Tied much for running the ball there, Joe. And, oh, he was open and just barely did get one hand on it. His feet kind of slid out from under him also. Crystal will be back at his 45-yard line waiting for the punt from Volker who will stand on his 10 to get it away. Got some pressure. Got it away. End over end. Crystal's going to let it bounce. Roughing the kicker. Flag is down. That's right, right where the kicker was. And now Southeast is on uh, Crystal about the time he picks it up. But it's going to come back upfield, and the roughing the kicker penalty is, is about to come here, Joe. And this is a little bit different in high school football also. All you've got to do is bump into him. You don't have to really rough him. Now, as you can see here, the guy just barely touches him. I mean, that's not a lot of anything, but that's the rule in high school football. See it from a different angle here, too. It looked like maybe that got touched a little bit, but no, but he just bangs into him. Adrian, what did it look like down there with you? Man, I'll tell you, that was a good job uh, as far as acting goes on behalf right. of that Southeast kicker. Was, he really didn't get quite a blow, but he got hit, and that's the key. you got to stay away from the kicker if you don't have a part of the ball. Secondly, that is an automatic first down, so uh, Southeast will have control of the football now. First and ten at, uh, where are we at? At about the 30-yard uh, line, so a very right, important kicker. play right now. Adrian, Adrian uh, are, are we boring you that much up here? You're reading that <laughs> newspaper down there on the sideline, huh? <laughs> well, you know, us old linebackers have to have a lot of help down here. <laughs> That's an old cliche by now that uh, Lloyd got an Emmy coming because he took a couple of steps after he was hit before he finally sank to his knees. McClatchy gets away from one, but not the second one. First guy in. Jim Collins was the guy that followed up. He was bothered, and then Collins in from the end spot at six foot 170 pounds, followed Ryan Fay, the tackle inside. Here you see it again. And they're doing such a job on one guy in the middle, Bryant, it's letting everybody else come up there. And a little blitz from the outside there also, Joe. And they're going to come at him. They're going to make him have to throw that ball quick and up over those big players, as Adrian mentioned before. Second and 16, the ball at the 31-yard line of the Knights in possession of Lincoln Southeast. McClatchy's throw is nearer the prep defenders and his man, his target was Matt Lloyd. Number 80 is right in. That time, Joe, I think there was a mistake between the guy running the pattern and the quarterback. Uh, he broke it off and the quarterback threw long. They haven't had many of those types of mistake in their throwing game so far, though. But I guarantee you that Creighton Prep is going to continue to come with this pressure. They're going to be all over him the rest of the ball game. And what he's going to have to do, he's going to have to hit some short ones right across the middle. Dragoo goes to the top along with Matt Lloyd. Double flanker off to the right side. McClatchy now with third down and forever. Gets chased. Throws it up the middle. Screen pass complete the Volker. But he is short of the first down. Good game. But they had too much to go. He gets to the 40. Eight yards short of the first down is fourth and eight. Ryan Murtzoff was a linebacker who dropped back, saw the screen pass coming, makes the stop. Just as I called it, Joe, they were going to screen up the middle, but the offensive linemen are going to have to brush these people just a little bit more so it gives it more time to get the play set up, Joe. Pretty good play by Murtzoff. He ran right through a blocker to make the tackle that time, and it's fourth and eight. That'll be Lloyd again back. This time stands at about his 28 with Crystal, the deep man for Creighton Prep, around his 27. Big kick. 
Crystal waving fair catch goes all the way back to the 16 to make it. Got a flag down, Joe, at the line of scrimmage. Somebody might have moved a little bit early there, so we might be kicking this over again. We'll see what the uh, what the call is here from the referee. Five-yard penalty will not give Southeast a first down. So it should be against the Knights, or should be against Creighton Prep. It still won't give them a first down. Prep might want them to kick over, though, if it's against the Southeast. It's yeah, like it's a, a legal it's procedure. A legal procedure against the Knights here. And go to Adrian on the sideline right quick. What is it, Adrian? Well, Dan, you were talking about the uh, about the penalty. It is a procedure penalty against Lincoln Southeast. Uh, somebody on the right eight, side over there was moving, and uh, consequently they'll have to kick it again and give uh, the Junior Jays an opportunity to run that ball or return the ball. So, again, a procedure on the Knights. Jason Crystal, 5'11", 155 pounds, one of the more elusive and speedier backs that the Junior Jays have. Well, I'll tell you, they're going to be wiped out on an offensive line. From side to side, everybody's a senior, so Jaworski will have a rebuilding job at prep next year. Lloyd is ready to kick, stands back at his 23. Another boomer, and Crystal may have a chance to run this one back. At his 23, to the 25, the 30, out of bounds at the 32. Bump at the sideline, no flag. And Creighton Prep will take over with 6.57 to go. The score tied. Third quarter, it's tied at 21-21. We'll be right back. There's the score. Jerry Durbin, number 14, brings them out. Jerry completed about 50% of his passes, three of them for TDs. He's a pretty good runner. Likes to run that option play. He scored twice himself. Handle back to Williams. Comes to the left side up around the 25-yard line. Kyle Emsick makes the stop. Make it the 35. A gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. And 6.44 remain third quarter. 21-14. Lincoln Southeast at halftime. Prep has come back to tie it up. And it's been that way all night. Nobody been more than seven points ahead. Who's ever trailing has been able to get back in it. This is Crystal at the bottom of your screen. Durbin, long call, handoff up the middle. McCann for a couple of three yards, but it's still going to be five yards short of the first down. Bolger makes the stop. Well, Joe, I tell you, the way these two teams are going, we saw there at halftime, we, we, we saw the opportunity in a, in a playoff ball game where you have overtime, and you would think that both of these teams are headed in that direction right now. It's real possibility for playoff. Adrian, what do you think about that? We're going to uh, playoff? Well, Dan, I would expect uh, that Tom Jaworski and Chuck Mazursky both are very conscious of the time now. Uh, we're going to get to back to play-by-play. -play. I'd like to talk about that in a minute here. Unbalanced line to the right. Thornton is the wide man. They wave him deep. Throws it deep. Stick is there. The ball is overthrown and out of bounds. Scott Thornton was the target. Jeff Stick had it all the way. And the pump fake did not dislodge Stick this time. They stick, stuck right with him. Although the ball was thrown about two or three yards out of bounds as you saw when it came down. Adrian, that one was thrown right at you, but let's go back down there and pick that up again. Were you talking about time and the potential for an overtime sudden death type situation? Well, right. Uh, as, as was pointed out earlier in your interview with Condi Sargent, uh, overtime has been a big factor now in, deci in deciding whether or not to go for one or two points. It's 21-21 now with five minutes left in the third quarter. Tom Jaworski, very mindful. You can see by that game planner attack in there in that last series, he's trying to take time off the clock. Here's the punt. Gets it away, and there's a beauty. And Onaha chases it all the way back. Comes back to the 10, the 15. Gets away from a couple, but not everybody. The 20-yard line is where they throw him down. Onaha went all the way back at his back upfield when he fielded it inside the 10. And it was Dean Brown off the kicking team that made the stop at the 20. Joe, I tell you, the, the lack of wind here uh, for after the ball game started has really helped the punting. We've seen tremendous punting in this ball game. Two times in a row, South and Southeast had to kick because of the penalty. Both of them were great big booming kicks, and that time kicked it 20 yards over the receiver. You see there, no wind at all. The flag's just limp. McClatchy has gone all the way for the Knights. Goes back to throw on the run. Throws it in his interference. It down and Omaha was the target. Pass interference on Creighton Prep. 
got to be, Joe. Yeah, he, he really caught him a little bit early there. What he was doing was anticipating <laughs> the throw a little bit and got in there soon and uh, got him. Yes, we see it on the replay here, Joe. He pick it up. That's monster back Jerry Leffler who was on top of it and anticipating a little bit. And Onaha is a kid from Nigeria with a knee injury who has not looked like anything but a speed merchant tonight. And very likely would have had Fast that without interference. the interference call. Creighton Crap. First down. He's going to move it out to the 36-yard line with 5.07 to go third quarter. Got that NFL-type production there with the uh, mic on the official. Big chase, and this time, no getting away from Jim Collins. McClatchy went back, and Collins was there at the same time. Just a straight blitz there, Joe. Didn't take anything else, no fake. Didn't wait around for anything, just boom, come right off the corner out here. Straight blitz, and he doesn't even have time to get his arm up to throw that one. He did a good job avoiding the fumble because he has to hold that ball with one hand as it falls backwards. Oh, my, yes. Did a great job of holding on to it, Joe, but nobody touched him. He just came clean. Second and 21, ball on the 25-yard line. McClatchy with a flanker to the left side. Hands it off to Onaha, and it's Aaron Pfeiffer who puts a stop to the play a couple of yards back of the line of scrimmage. So now it's going to be almost third and forever for the Knights. And as you see the coaching staff here, we pick up the play. What they have got to do is realize that Creighton Prep is going to be coming on every situation. They're going to be blitzing here, Joe, and they've got to throw some screens or some short passes or they're in big trouble. Third and 23. It's a 22-yard line as McClatchy looks him over. Gives some ground, gets chased again. He's running for his life the last three plays. And that was Collins again. The target was Emsick, but it was nowhere near catchable. Nothing at all, Joe. They're coming that time from the other side of the field, and they've either got to keep somebody in. They're putting four receivers out, which means they have very few people to block with, and they don't have a back in the backfield that's able to pick up that blitzing guy from either side. Collins just teeing off from that right side. Let me mention right guard Mike Mutter, who they could use tonight on the offensive line. He suffered a broken leg, and Southeast wanted to be sure that uh, he did get his name down because he had a great season for them before the leg fracture. Kicking situation. Lloyd is back inside his 10. Crystal deep for Trayton Crump. Might have a chance to run this one back. Grabs it right on the 40. A 45. That's midfield. And into Southeast territory by a couple of yards. Cornell Mew shoves him out of bounds. And Prep will put the ball in play with 3.36 to go third quarter. Well, I hope you're not even thinking of leaving because it's been a type of ball game that especially if you don't care either way, still one that's fun to watch, 21 and 21. Durbin at quarterback, handoff to Williams, left side. Good yardage up over midfield or around the 45 of Southeast, maybe the 44. A gain of six, it'll be second and four, and Ron Samuel, the only sophomore starter for the Knights, makes a stop, 5'8", 177 pounds. Joe, I want to say a little thank you right now to our stations along the network. We'll start with Omaha and KPTM 42. I hope everybody's enjoying it there in Omaha and Lincoln. They've brought a lot of sports to us. Jason Crystal, bottom of your screen. Durbin hands it off to Williams or to McCann. Runs out of one tackle, but it actually cost him a couple of yards. They drove him back. He got loose, and Eric Gilbert's from the safety spot came up to spill him for a loss. Going to make a third and about seven. So there's not many times when a runner can say that he had eight tacklers go by him on a two-yard run, but he did that time. 235 remained in the third quarter. Only scoring the period so far. Prep with a touchdown to tie it up. That's Matt Mullen, number 45, coming wide to this side. Durbin at quarterback. Mullen in motion. Goes back to throw. Here comes the blitz. It's stick, and he got it. A blitz of their own. Boy, I tell you, Joe, these teams have patterned each other so much as this ball game went along. First, the throwing game. Both of them connecting on good passing, and then when Creighton Prep starts blitzing, Southeast says, come right back with it. We're going to blitz, too. 
That was Volker very gentlemanly helping Durbin to his feet. <laughs> yeah. Adrian, uh, is it as rugged as down there as it seems I tell you up what, here? Joe, it's nothing but hammer and dog football in the second half. And Jeff Stick saw that motion, the motion going away from him. He called off the signal in the secondary and took the blitz. He just called it on his own. Great play, and there's the kick. Here's Brian Roos kick and Stick's spare catch at the 25-yard line. So Southeast has the ball back. It's an even ball game with a minute 34 to go third period. 21 and 21. These coaching staffs uh, are really working this extremely hard, Joe. Uh, both of them are fired up on their players, and you can see them exerting them on because they know one little extra bit of effort could mean the difference in this ball game, like another fingertip catch we've seen already, Joe. Wide to the far side is Dragu. McClatchy puts now Boker in motion. Pitts goes back to Anaha, turns the corner, but not very much, and the flag goes down. Might be a face mask. I think, Joe, it's going to be a holding. They could have called a holding in there early, and then it looked like a holding on the end over there, although you could be right. You look what the official says here. Monster back Jerry Loeffler makes the stop. Holding penalty is it against the Knights. Minute 28 to go, the clock stop. Stopped him at the line of scrimmage, but I... You don't often turn down a major penalty. There's a look at it again. As the flag goes flying, great steel frame there. It must have been throwing that flag for that hole inside, and the official just took a little time in getting the flag out of his pocket, Joe, but that's where it was, way on the inside. Holding. Southeast. First down. Listen, if he's going to have that microphone, Joe, he's got a little be, little more dramatic with these things, you know? We can't give him the microphone. he just come up to the line of scrimmage and say, hold him. First and 20 for the Knights. Out they come. Volker and Emsmick by the backs. McClatchy with a man in motion gives it off. Volker hits, or Emsick hits the outside, and not for very much, a couple of yards. Mike Lapp, linebacker on the left side. 58 seconds, less than a minute to go, Adrian. What do you think? Well, Joe, every time Southeast has run number 66, Chad Davis in motion, it's almost that Chicago Bears refrigerator play. They run the, the guy in motion, that's Chad Davis, and then lead up in there with his block. And Chad Davis is uh, 5'10 and 225 pounds, so he's, he's a blocking desk up inside there, and the play really works rather effectively. Prep shut that one down. Two-way player. McClatchy gets some time this time, throws it out there. They can't catch up. Target was Sean Gillespie who caught the touchdown pass. Lap was there, and so was LaRondo. Creighton in uh, close pursuit, but the ball overthrown. So McClatchy, who couldn't miss, he laid him on their fingertips early, has overthrown a couple and underthrown a couple, and it's still tied at 21. We're down to less than half a minute to go in this the third period. Joe, it looks like one of those things early on in the ball game. He was just letting his ability do it. Now he's trying to measure it. He's almost like a pitcher in a ball game when they say he's struggling a little bit. He's trying to aim the ball, and he is really trying to lay it out there, but just throwing a little bit too heavy right now. That's Lloyd and Dragu, bottom of your screen. Take the play action. He's open down the middle. Throws it way down. Everybody is there, but nobody is quite close enough. Lloyd was the target, but Prep had a couple of defenders back. The nearest mark is Anderson, number 23. But again, McClatchy, with a lot of arm, put it about three feet, at three yards out of reach. And he was open early, Joe. As you said, Lloyd, when he first came about 15 yards downfield and broke open, if he'd have been able to get it to him then, it would have been a reception. But then he decided to loft it up, and there were a lot of people around the ball. I don't think anybody had a chance to complete that one. A kicking situation. Volker will, or Lloyd will drop back and stand near his five-yard line with Jason Crystal five yards into his territory. Big high kick. Let's see if Crystal got a chance to handle it. Yeah, midfield. The 49 to the 48, a one-yard run back. So again, Prep will take over in Lincoln Southeast territory, their 48-yard line. Demetrius Daus, the nose guard, was down to make the stop for the Knights. Ten seconds only remain in this the third period. Defense is the call from the cheerleaders and there's some of the Knights cheering section. 
Krupp trying to get one more playoff before the quarter ends. Durbin is in at quarterback. He'll have to hurry. Not enough time. It's all over. Clock ran out before Krupp could get it going. So after three periods of play, as far as point difference is concerned, we're right back where we started. But it's been a heck of a ball game, and it's 21-21 Krupp in Southeast. Fourth and final quarter after this. Twelve minutes of playing time, and as Connie Sargent suggested, maybe more at the end of this one, Dan. Yeah, that, that's true. There could be, Joe. Uh, nice shots of the cheerleaders there. Cute little gals uh, cheering their team on. Durbin brings Prep up. 48-yard line of the Knights. Pitch back to Williams. Looks like he wants to throw it. Puts on the brakes. Throws it long downfield. A lot of people there. Almost intercepted. Drop. They were going on a play with the... Uh, High back, trying to throw, and he did not get a good pass off, and Stick was a guy from the right corner that almost made the interception. Williams kind of telegraphs it here when he right. doesn't really run hard, and this throw is not nearly as far as he wanted it to be. Just, just I think, Joe, just threw it outside of his ability to get it downfield. His arm is not quite there, and that ball should have been intercepted. That's a fellow that's made a lot of interceptions, six of them this year. There's the numbers. Look at the rushing yards difference. The Jays 113 to 23. The Knights have the big edge in passing, but the total's pretty even. Six for 21 for the Knights, three for 10 in the air for the Jays. Second down and 10. Durbin on the run. He's going to run. He goes to midfield. Gets near the 40-yard line, about the 43, before Kyle Emsick shoves him out, along with Eric Algilbers. Joe, as you saw the stats there, the Knights had most of those yards passing in the first half. Unless they get that passing game going again, with Creighton Prep being able to build up the rushing yards, uh, I would think it's going to be a little bit of trouble for Southeast. You know, Prep has won five titles in all in the 14 years of the Class A Championship. Last three in a row, but they also got the top prize in 80 and 83. Six out of nine, Joe. Durbin. Hand off to Williams. He finds out that that night defense is all that's been advertised, and that first guy there was Chad Davis, who goes both ways, along with defensive tackle John Albert. Davis is a big outdoorsman. He's 5'10", 220 pounds. Here it is again. Watch him make the play. And right, he bangs right in there, Joe, with that big body, but there's no place to go. He's got nowhere in here. Boy, he's met right on there by... Allberg is number 67 at 240 and 6'3". But it's fourth down, and Prep was going to put the ball up. Stick is a deep man back in his own 10. Rue will kick from just his side of the 40. Big high kick, fair catch waved, and they're going to let it go. Prep made down this one. Flag is thrown down, and it comes down at the 10-yard line. They threw it at the feet of Stick, Jeff Stick, and let's see what it's all about. The flag is about this, Joe. He called a fair catch, and then he blocked. That's what the flag's about. You can't do that. So I'm sure that's what it is. Prep downs the ball at the three-yard line, and the officials confer. He was hoping that would take a southeast bounce into the end zone. He got it. That's the block by the fair catch. It's a fair catch. He waved it very, very well. Steps away, hoping that it's going to hit and go on in. Well, that's exactly the call, Joe. Uh, he did block, in fact, after he signaled fair catch. And it's significant because we're playing on this natural grass field. Had it been that artificial turf, I think the ball would have carried on in the end zone. The ball did come down inside the 10-yard line, so Stick was correct in staying away from fielding the ball. But this natural grass, uh, this natural sod out here, it's kind of a heavy field. The ball uh, hit, bounced, and then, you know, they get uh, the ball goes over. 10-54. Brighton Prep second and nine at the 24-yard line of the Knights. We'll show you how they got there in just a moment. Durbin with a handoff to Williams goes outside. Can't get away from the pursuit. Shoved out of bounds for a couple of yards lost and Jeff Stick shoves him out. The fair catch block was a 15-yard penalty. Brighton Prep elected to take the 15 yards and that gave them a first down and they keep possession. That's exactly right. Here on first down, they only picked up two yards, Joe. But a very, very big break in this ball game. They had the ball down on the three-yard line, but because Stick 
chose to block after the fair catch, a 15-yard penalty, and this might be the break that turns this ball game around, Joe. Well, not too far out of field goal range if they elect to go that route, but they've got third and 11 right here. Durbin back looking for the screen pass, throws it over the middle, complete, and Lincoln Southeast recovers in time to hold it to a couple of yard gain. John Alberg, along with Chad Davis, they grab John McCann. So it's going to be fourth down at about nine. And let's see if, look for number 90, Brian Rue to come on. He's two for four in field goals this year. Yeah, that guy in the middle there, Joe, uh, the, the screen man really telegraphed that screen. He turned right around and was yelling for the ball. And of course, you're doing that in the middle of the field. You're telling everybody else that the screen is going to be there. Ball will be put down at the 31-yard line. This will be a 41-yard attempt by Rue. It is up, has a distance. No good, off to the right side. Predominantly Lincoln Southeast crowd from Seagrass Field. Picks up on that one. We've got 9.08 to go and we've still got a tie, 21 to 21. Fourth quarter. How does it look on a handheld TV? <laughs> There's a fellow you can ask, and he'll tell you. Tell him, turn around and wave. Hey, buddy, wave at us. <laughs> you may have the audio down just watching the picture. Here come the Knights. Matt Lloyd is wide to the right side. McClatchy's gone all the way at quarter, hands off up the middle. Bolker for two, maybe three yards up across the 20 to near the 25. Jerry Loeffler, monster back, makes a stop for the Little Jays. And the clock ticks away. It's down to 8.52 now. It's still tied 21-21. Only scoring in this half, a prep touchdown in the third quarter. They trailed at halftime 21-14. Now it's even. Again, Matt Lloyd comes to the outside along with Dean Dragoo, the wide receiver. Double flankers, right side. McClatchy looks, goes over the middle, too short. Going for Gillespie, who caught a touchdown pass. This one he had to take on the short hop. But Leon Bolton was the nearest guy. Joe, he's just having no time whatsoever to throw the ball. I think what they should do, if they have it in their repertoire, is roll him out a little bit and maybe roll the pocket with him. Because that straight drop back, the, the defensive linemen of Creighton Prep are so strong, they're just pouring right through. As you can see here, they're through there before he gets a chance to even fake the ball. Big third down play, third and six for the Knights at their own 24. McCloskey on a draw. On a gets away, and he's got the first down with something to spare. Leon Bolton, free safety, has to make the stop. Good call and good execution by the Knights. The draw play, and it worked perfectly. Extremely good call, Joe. We had called for that about 10 plays ago, and that was tremendous call and great execution. They didn't give that play away, made it look like a pass long enough until he was able to drop that ball off and then go upfield. If you can see here on the replay, and then, of course, he dodged a lot of tacklers right on. I was afraid here for a minute he wasn't going to pick the first down up as he was juking back and forth. Again, double flanker to the open field side. They fake it over the middle. McCloskey on the run, throws on the run. It is right at the sidelines. Gillespie was a target incomplete, and Leon Bolton, the nearest guy to it. I'm not sure if he'd hung on if they haven't allowed the catch, but it's academic now because Gillespie comes back. It'll be second and ten. It's Gillespie coming across the field. He's a, had eight catches this year, two touchdowns before tonight and one tonight. He was a tired young man there, ran his pattern, and then had to run all the way back across the field, Joe. It's Gregu coming to the bottom of your screen. Only wide out for uh, McClatchy. Hands it off up the middle. They come in. <laughs> Pounding the ground is Kyle Emsick because he thought he should have avoided that trip and picked up a lot of yardage. T.J. Debias was the guy who got the hand on his ankle. Here it is. Boy, is this a high school football player or not? Look at him. Socks bagging down here. Pants too big for him. Shirts out. He's got dirt all over him, but he wants to play football, Joe. And He's, he goes both ah. ways. Dragu this time goes to the far side, the top of your screen. Here's Emsick's numbers. Long run of 37 yards, seven carries. He crashes off the side. It's Emsick again, and he 
very little of any yardage, and here comes the kicking route. The kicking team on linebacker Mike Lapp, number 65 for the Jays at the bottom of the stack. Well, I tell you, tell our audience to hold on here. With only seven minutes left to go in this ball game, if these teams do this back and forth for the rest of this time, you're going to see an exciting playoff. It is something that you've never seen on television before, and you see this thing live. It is one of the most exciting things in athletics that I've seen. Lloyd will kick from his 26-yard line. He's got Crystal back at his own 20. High snap, but he's got it. Crystal may have a chance. Going to drop in front of him. Goes toward the sidelines. He's going to let it go. That's a pretty fair kick. That comes down at the 18-yard line, and that's where Prep will have it in a tie ball game with six and a half minutes to go. We'll be right back with the final six and a half after this. Prep breaks their huddle and will put the ball in play from their own 18. Durbin stays on at quarterback. Handoff goes short man to McCann. With a good fake to Williams. McCann hit by Kyle Emsick and by Neil Boker, the linebackers who have done yeoman service all season long. Adrian at the sidelines. Does it look uh, as tough now as it did in the third and the fourth, first and the second quarters? Well, Joe, the intensity level is still there, and time is now a factor. Six and counting down, six minutes and counting down here in the fourth quarter. I'll finish up the comment after this play. Matt Mullen wide to the left side. Hand off to Williams, but there's not much room. He's up around the 25-yard line. Okay, Adrian, back to you. Well, as I was going to say, uh, now we're down under six minutes, 5.50 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. This is a big series for Creighton Prep. I think they have the ability to ground, to grind the football out against this Southeast defense. I'm not so sure that Lincoln Southeast has that ability. They have to rely on the big play. So it's a very, very important series right here for the Junior Jays. It's about third and three. It's a big play right here in this football game. Got another question for you in a moment. Right, third and three. The Jays at their own 25. Rolling Durbin being chased. Throws it. Complete first down. Scott Thornton got it and got out of bounds. Just across the 30-yard line. Should this go into overtime, Adrian? Is You got a, a pick or any strategy that you think any team would be favored in an overtime sudden death? Well, I think probably I would have to think that uh, the Junior Jays would be favored in an overtime. Uh, they have the ability, as I mentioned, to grind the football out. They start, as I understand it, they start the overtime at the 10-yard line, and then they have four plays, and whoever scores... Uh, first, well, then the other team gets its shot at uh, four plays in the 10-yard line. I think Craig Prep maybe has the edge in that category. Durbin brings about first and 10. And uh, up the middle, McCann goes up close to the 35-yard line. And, of course, uh, Adrian, I'm sure what Creighton Prep would want to do right now as we've got uh, five minutes left to go in the ballgame is control this ball all the way from now on and either get a chance at a field goal or go into overtime. Well, that's right, Dan, and that's uh, the reason for the comment as far as controlling the, the ball and grinding it out right now. We're under five minutes now. I'm looking at the clock. It's 4.50 and counting. If they can control the ball, take it down the field, and score all the pressure that is on Lincoln Southeast. Second and six for Prep at the zone 35. Open field left side. They go that way. Williams comes up. He gets to the 40. Needed to get to about the 41 a little bit more. About a yard and a half short as Ron Samuel is at the bottom of the stack. Tried to turn his end. 425 remain. Here it is. And as you tell you, grinding it out. They pull in a couple of guys here. Got some good blocks at the line of scrimmage. It's a lot of traffic. He picks his way pretty good. Lowers his head and picks up a couple of yards. But it's going to be tough for them to take this ball all the way down the field. Big third down, Joe. Scott Thornton brings the play and then goes as a flanker to the right side. Five-man front by Southeast. Quarterback sneak. Did they get it? Williams thinks they did. Durbin goes into the middle. It may be close enough to measure, and yet, let's take a look when they spot it. Well, they got two different spots there, and they went back to the... Oh, no doubt about it. He, he says first down without even glancing at the sideline, Joe. Mark Mentarfer, their defensive tackle, as you see, make the play, but the whole center of that line surged out in front of Durbin, who's... Not that big, but a pretty tough runner. There's good, good line surge there, Joe. Great and prep. Got off the ball real crisp at the line of scrimmage, and Southeast was kind of submerging going down under. 
Jason Crystal, top of your screen, flanking right side. Durbin with a handoff to McCann, couple of yards. Volker, who has been in evidence on both sides of the ball tonight, offensive linebacker along with Chad Davis, her couple of big ones, 5'10", 220 for Davis, 5'10", 210 for Volker. Well, you got to be a heck of an athlete like Volker to play both sides of the ball there. McCann uh, has 76 yards. Nobody's going to have a great big day rushing the ball against these two defenses, but you got to be a heck of an athlete, as I was saying, to play both sides of the ball in a big physical ball game when the adrenaline's going like it is now. Of those 76, McCann got 42 of them on one spectacular run. Got him into the end zone. Pitts goes back, setting up the double reverse. They fake it. McCann turns the corner, but not by very much. Got the line of scrimmage of maybe a half a yard more before he ran into Matt Nitsche. You think, Joe, sooner or later they're going to give it to that guy coming around because the last two times they've run that play, the fake reverse, it looks like the guy that would have gotten the ball as he comes by here looks like that guy would have had some running room. But the Knights are not going for this fake at all. They had about six guys on that side of the field. Clock runs down to 220, third and seven. Big third down play for the Jays. They're still in, on their side of the midfield stripe, but they're 45. Durbin rolls, has time. Throws on the run, way over the receiver. Flag goes down. That was Crystal they were going for, and he was run over by Jeff Stick. Been a tough night for Jeff at that right corner. And, and the officials are going down, Joe, but another different rule here. The, the rule about the ball being overthrown, uncatchable, does not apply in high school. If you, if you interfere, you interfere. Now, as you can see, the ball is uncatchable. In college, that would have not been called. But in high school, it is called. And it brings up a penalty situation, and they're going to step it off across midfield. A big break for Creighton Prep. They got a penalty a little bit ago that kept them alive. And a field goal went awry yeah, for them after the safety man single fair catch and then through the block. Here's a... Well, I, I, you hate to see a ball game decided on a penalty, Joe, but it really wasn't the penalty. The referee had to call it. It was just a mistake by the young defender. That's all. Scott Thornton, bottom of your screen, flanking left side. Durbin slowly brings him out. Power eye formation. Hand off Williams up the middle. Grabbed by Chad Davis and Bulldog down about the 37-yard line. They will need to get to the 30 to pick up the first down. Adrian, do you think that Creighton Prep is now going to go and try to get into field goal position, or are they just going to run this clock out? Dan, I really think that they're going to try to get, they're going to try to score a touchdown is what they're going to try to do. However, they're going to try to get it as close as they can. It's a minute and 40 and counting. They're going to try to keep the ball in the middle of the field and try to kick that field goal. Their field goal kicker, I'm not sure as far as length goes, how he's done this year. I think he's two for four on the year, but uh, sure, they're going to try to get it in its best position as they can. Last try was long enough, but why? Pitch to Williams, comes outside, got some room, he turns the corner. Boy, he can turn it on and he's got the first down or very close to it. It may be a half a yard short. It's close enough, I think, to measure. Eric Al Gilbert shoved him out of bounds along with Neil Volker, and here it is again. Look at Williams shifting the second gear here. Yes, uh, as we watch him go on the outside, Adrian, the reason I asked you that question is because they were kind of pounding it up the middle, and I thought they might have to do something like this, going to the outside or well, the passing game, one or the other. Adrian? Well, Dan, they're, they're going to try to keep the ball on the ground, and also it was very significant that Jason Williams was able to get out of bounds and stop that clock. Now a minute 21, uh, we'll start it up right here. Durbin sets him down, gives it to McCann up the middle, fights off a tackle and goes near the 20. Volker makes the stop again along with Brian Bach, the middle linebacker. A gain of five, second and five in the clock. Running now is down to one minute. Even. Tied at 21. The Jays, three times champions, wanting to make it four. Durbin brings them out. Second and five, the clock down to 50 seconds. Hands off to Williams again, goes left, doesn't get first down. Got maybe a yard, possibly two. Across the 20 to around the 19, and the clock is down to 38 seconds. Make it 39 as Emsick makes the stop.
Durbin walks out, talks to the official, walks back to the huddle. 39 seconds, and that only remains in regulation time. It's tied at 21. Third down, three to go for the first down. The Blue Jays are on the 19-yard line of the Knights. And up to Williams, goes in, and I believe he's got it. If he hasn't, it might be close enough to measure. Looked like he was stopped, and he surged forward, and it's going to depend on where they spot the ball as Ron Samuel submarine the play. But Williams, with that speed, might have surged over the top. The clock stops with 24 seconds and an injury. Well, we've had very few of those tonight, and very slow up on the play, limping back to the huddle. Here's the play again. Joe, what they're doing here most certainly is putting it right in the middle of the field. If they don't pick up the first down, they got the ball in great position. As you see the Southeast people there on the replay trying to pull it away. Now down to Adrian on the sideline. What does it look like? Well, Dan, I think the ball is short. It depends on the, yeah, it's about a maybe a half a yard short. You'll see it right there. So the moment <laughs> of truth has arrived for the Junior Jays and Tom Dvorsky. 24 seconds left in this game, tied up at 21 all. We shall see. Here comes Durbin onto the field now. So he's a gritty performer. I he kind of epitomizes that John Madden style of football, don't what you say, Dan? Uh, he, he, he really does. There's no doubt about it there. I think what he was asking, if they could get the ball moved, and now they're going to let it run down. He went up to the official, told the official exactly what time they wanted to call their timeout at. Now, he's going to call a timeout here at a predetermined time. I'm pretty sure it's going to be about eight seconds, if I were them, call that timeout. Six seconds. Creighton Prep was going to set it up for possibly a grand finale finish. 21-21. We'll find out about it after this. Short timeout. Brian Rue comes in. Boots it high and far. And you see the celebration. Two seconds on the clock. But it looks like the Junior Jays have taken their fourth straight state title. Here is the kick while we were away. High and far. And Rue puts it deep across the crossbars. There are two seconds on the clock. Creighton Prep, 24. Lincoln Southeast, 21. And you see the crestfallen Knights coming back to the sidelines wondering what in the world can you do in two seconds. It's going to have to be some kind of run back. And Rue, who has had field goals of uh, four attempts and two of them go through this year put this one through when he had to do it with the money all on the line great and prep a couple of penalties helped Knights hurt their cause a couple of times with penalties that let prep keep the ball they played it down to six seconds had a short time out Rue came on and put it long and true there are two seconds of playing time remaining, so Prep will kick off. And I don't know. Just nothing to do there, Joe, at all. They'll kick off, uh, but, you know, you would have to run it all the way back. I'm sure Creighton Prep is going to squib the kick. And uh, let's go down to Adrian. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to well, kick it short. Dan, that would be my uh, my assumption also is that they would squib kick it roll it around the ground and try to well two seconds uh, even if they feel that uh, they're not going to be able to get a good return on a squib kick so we'll see right here see if he'll kick it right off the top of the ball and try to skitter it along the ground and uh, well I tell you what just the the air out of this West Stadium over here the where the Southeast fans are sitting the air just simply went out on that field goal try as you would expect 42 yard field goal Puts Prep in front. They started off leading 7 to nothing, trail at halftime by 21 to 14, but all the points in the second half have gone to the Junior Jays. The biggest three off the foot of Brian Rue now is going to kick it. Kicks it short. Next, pick it up. They lateral it back. Almost a rugby ball game. They're still running, but it's all over. Russell down as everybody touches the football. The clock goes out. Prep pours out of the opposite stands. And it's been a heck of a ball game, and... Tom Jaworski and his Peyton Prep Little Jays for the fourth straight time.